Thank you very much for attending this webinar on using ArcGIS apps to optimize office and field operations for utilities. My name is James Moridi and welcome. So for our outline for this webinar, we will look at the field operation process and this will basically drive the whole presentation. We will look at how we can be able to fuse work management into the ArcGIS platform. We will be able to look at how we can create and dispatch assignments from the office to the field and then look at how we can capture field data using smartphones. Finally, we will be able to see how we can monitor our projects using real-time data from the field. So field operation is now a five uh, step process and we're now able to see how we can be able to plan by authoring the maps and data that we want to work on and extend to the field by publishing them to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. Once we publish them there, we are now able to consume them. So before we could just be able to consume these services and extend them to the field. But now we have a number of steps and new applications that allow us to optimize our field operations. And one of those applications is Workforce for ArcGIS. So Workforce for ArcGIS is a new web, web application uh, that allows us to fuse our work management into the ArcGIS platform. It allows us to create, prioritize, and assign work. It allows us to manage planned work assignments and also allows us to react and respond to unplanned work simply because we can see where the field workers are and in case an issue or an incident happens, we're able to get the resource that is available at that particular time and be able to send them out to fix that particular problem very easily because we have all the information we need out from the field. We can administer our workforce projects simply because we can go ahead, create new projects from within the web application. We can configure assignments, add them based on exactly what we want to do from the field. Do we want to perform survival inspections? Do we want to be able to perform meter replacements? We can create all these work uh, or rather assignment types from Workforce for ArcGIS. We can add dispatchers and mobile workers. And not just that, we can add their contact numbers, their job titles, and notes. For example, on the left, on the right side, you can see we're able to put certifications on what that field worker can do. And then we're able to configure maps and layers and opt optimize them well. So if it is the dispatches, we can optimize those maps for the dispatcher in the office. And for the field workers, we can optimize the kind of maps that they're able to view because we want them to be able to have a very good experience of using the map on the small screen. We can also configure the apps by integrating exactly what we want to do within Workforce for ArcGIS. And we'll look at that much later. So within Workforce for ArcGIS, we can be able to dispatch our work assignments. We can create new work assignments and we can do this by either geocoding. We can use the map by selecting the features we want to create or add as assignments. And we can also use our SDKs to be able to create uh, these work assignments. We can assign, reassign, and cancel work at any time. And this is individually or in bulk to save time. We can filter and sort assignments accordingly. We can view all the mobile workers we've added to the system, and we can see who's online and who is offline. We can also search the map and to be able to get information that we need uh, from, from the data that we have. We can coordinate field to the office workflows. So once the field worker logs into his Workforce for ArcGIS on the mobile device or on the smartphone, remember you can download Workforce for ArcGIS from the App Store if you're using an iOS product, from the Android, Google Play, or from the Windows Store if you're using Windows. You can view and complete work assignments from within the application on the phone. You can organize your work list based on what is important to you. You can receive notifications of new work that has been assigned to you. You can set your working status so that in case you're busy, you can be able to put your status as busy so that no more work can be able to come to you. If you're free, you can as well do that. Enter that as a status and in the office, the dispatcher will be able to tell that 
so and so is free for work and they can be able to uh, assign them more or tasks to do. You can add and edit notes and you can be able to send them back to the office and even the office can be able to add notes to projects and be able to read them and understand exactly what's happening. You can view reference attachments. This can come as pictures or as PDF documents, for instance. So work assignments do have properties. And some of these properties are like status, the due date for the assignment, the priority, assignee, and the type. So for the status, it can either be as an assigned, assigned, in progress, paused, completed, or declined. So one of the other properties for your work projects or assignments is it can be time stamped. That way you can be able to tell exactly when when this was created. You also have your priorities in your in your work assignments properties. It can either be none, set to low, medium, high, or critical. So that when you send this assignment to the field worker, they're able to tell exactly how fast they should be able to, to react to that particular assignment. You can also include attachments to your work assignment, like documents and pictures. So for a mobile worker, workers' properties, when we add them, you can add their contact number, the title, and attach some notes to that particular mobile worker. So for the status, they can, they can either be working, they can be on break, or not working. This will allow us to easily be able to uh, give them tasks based on the status that they have. You can also view the location of the mobile worker, either current or their location tracks for, for a particular duration of time. So one of the integration we can be able to do within Workforce for JS is allowing our mobile workers to navigate to an assignment. They just need to click navigate and Navigator for ArcGIS op opens up and they can simply be able to uh, navigate to that particular assignment through the route that will be created by the application. As well, if they need to collect anything, they just need to click or tap on collect at assignment and then Collector for ArcGIS opens up and they will be able to collect or add a particular feature on that particular location on the map. And then once they're done, they can go back to work for Spark JS and go on working on the other assignments that have been given. The same thing, if they need to use smart forms, they can click on survey one, two, three, and that will be able to launch survey one, two, three application. And they can go ahead and simply add in their data and save it and then go back to work for Spark JS to complete their assignments. So now let us look at Workforce for ArcGIS. So this is Workforce for ArcGIS, the web ap application. Once you open and you sign in, here you can see I've signed in as James. You will be able to see all the projects that you have created. You can open any to just launch them or you can go ahead and create a new project, which is exactly what we're going to do. So I'm just gonna tap on create new project. And in here, we need to put in our name for the project. So we need to create a project on water violations. So in case that exists, you can be able to see that that project exists and we can give it a new name. I'll go with that and I'll copy that and paste it and go ahead and create the project. So this collects everything it needs in the background and processes that for you. And once it's ready, it will show you so that you can take the next step. 
at this point, I might add that it is very easy to use Workforce for ArcGIS. Everything is easily laid out for you. There we go, so it's completed. And now you can see the project is there for us. And we have four steps and step one is completed, as you can see on this side of the screen. So on the right side, we can see we've already created the project. We need now to finish these three steps. And the next step is adding our assignments. So we scroll down there to see where we're going to add the assignments. So you click inside there. And this is where you add what kind of work do you want the field workers to do. These are the assignments that we're talking about. So we want them to do some inspection. So I can add that as a type of assignment. Scroll down. And as you can see, the more I add, the progress bar keeps on adding and building up. So I'm going to add another one. Where I just want to report an incident. Just add that and in case you can check on the progress keeps on adding itself. So now good, we are having two assignment types and that's good for me. So what's the next step? The next step is adding mobile workers. You can even see the users tab is glowing. That means we need to click on it. Very easy and intuitive. So I'm going to click on that. And then I can scroll below to add my mobile workers. So from your organization user list, you can you click on it, scroll down a little bit. I'm going to add the users and I'm, you can either add them as a dispatcher or as a mobile worker. Down below, you can see James Moridi is already a dispatcher. So I don't need any other dispatcher at, the, at this particular moment. I just need the mobile workers. So I'm just going to click on mobile worker, click add, go to the next one. Add them as a mobile worker. You can also add them from a list. I'm going to add myself as a mobile worker as well. Let's scroll down a little bit. Make sure that I have everyone. There we go. I think my my list is full now. I'm good to go. So now I can see I have my four steps. I don't need to add any dispatches, so I can simply go to advanced. So this is where I now select the type of integration I want within my workforce for ArcGIS. So I can just simply go ahead and expand that. Scroll down. I need to be able to add my collector for my watering violations. And here I have my maps for my content on ArcGIS Online. And then I'm just going to search for violations. And just add that. And then I want to apply the project to all the assignments. So I'm going to apply that particular uh, map uh, to my work assignments that I've added. So I'm just going to click next. In case I need to be able to add a field from my workforce project to the mobile or to the field worker or collector, I can be able to simply just select the field that I want. Uh, maybe if I want to extend the field ID on the work on the workforce field to a particular field ID within you know the collector, I can be able to do so. But I don't want any of that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click done. You can see automatically Navigator for ArcGIS has been added. The next step is selecting the tracking layer. So first of all, I want to enable tracking for my field workers. So I just click on enable. And by default, I, I am able to track each and every one of them every 30 seconds. In case that is a bit too much, I can just be able to increase the number 
uh, of minutes or seconds that I want to track them. I like it. I like it at 30 seconds, so I'm just going to scroll back to 30 seconds and I think now I'm good and ready to go. So there we go, I can just now go back to overview. My project is almost ready. I can click on the thumbnail to give it a proper thumbnail. And then this is where now we optimize the maps. Uh, for the dispatcher and for the mobile worker. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the dispatcher map to add some more layers so that it actually makes more sense when he's looking at the map. He's able to see the issues and the content from what has been published from the, from the office so that they can be able to select it and uh, add uh, as assignments if that's what they need. So I'm just going to go ahead search for my violations and just enter click the plus sign to add it all right has been added i can already see the workers and the assignments layers so what i want to do here is i can change the base map and give it open street map this way the dispatcher is able to see very well exactly what's happening so i can save that map close it and now let's optimize the field worker map i'm going to add the same layer so that they're able to see exactly where these assignments are and the issues that are on the ground using the smartphone. So I'm just going to click add and search for layer. For my content, it's violations. Enter. Then add in that layer. There we go. That's completed. I can optimize the base map. So in case they'll have a very, you know, kind of not really good internet connection or the bundles they're using on their network isn't you know, that good or they're going to an area without very good connectivity I can simply select one of these light base maps but for me I'm just gonna go with the streets base map and then just to optimize it a bit more I can go here and say I want the visibility range to just drop down to something like a county there we go. And then go ahead and click on save. In case you want them to see the tracking layer by themselves, you can just select it from there. I'm just going to leave it at that. So we are good to go. I can go ahead and click close. So our project is ready. All I need to do now is click on open project. Great. So as the dispatcher, you can see that my base map now is OpenStreetMap. You can zoom in a bit to see what's happening to the already reported issues on the ground. In case I want to cluster them, I can cluster them. Zoom in just a little bit. There we go. So at the moment, I have not assigned anyone anything. So for me to go ahead and do that, I can simply click on the identify features, drag to the ones I see are critical and release. Once they're released, I can see individual uh, incidences that have been raised. I can select the one I want, but in this case, I'm just gonna do select all, and then I'm gonna create assignments out of this. So once I do that, they do come to the side here. And remember our assignment types? Here is where now I can say I want to have them inspected. So I can select inspection as my assignment type. And then I can assign these to James. Okay. 
can see everyone at the moment is offline if I was online there would be a green symbol around my profile so the priority like we said one of the properties I can set that to critical and the due date for this assignment is Monday in case I have any work ID I can place it there I can put a description for this assignment There we go. And in case I need to pass any attachment to the field, I can simply go ahead and select it from there. So I'm ready to go. Everything is good. I can just verify that and go ahead and create these assignments. Very simple. And you can see now on the map, they have been added. So we are good to go. We can go back to the presentation to look at basically these apps that we're able to integrate with our workforce. So we mentioned about integration of different apps to the workforce for ArcGIS that kind of helps us to optimize uh, our field operations. And one of these is Navigator for ArcGIS. So Navigator for ArcGIS is a very good application that you download from ArcGIS online. And uh, if you're using Portal for Admin, you log into uh, my Esri, download the license and the maps. Once you download the maps and the license, especially if you want to use your, your you know, already existing Esri maps, you download it, register it with the portal, upload it to your portal for ArcGIS, and then download it to your device. And then it will be ready for consumption by the field workers. So how do you customize your own navigation data? You simply author your data using ArcGIS Pro. You package it, share it to your ArcGIS Online or Port of ArcGIS and then download it on your mobile device once you log in and then you'll be ready to consume that map. So it's very easy using the mobile package to create uh, that particular custom map. Uh, it supports geocoding and routing. It allows you to, create, you can create in ArcGIS Pro, use it in Pro for navigation, even runtime in case you're doing some development work. It allows you to have a faster, smaller, and easier to share package that can be consumed by the mobile device. So once you create it using this particular tool, you're able to now go ahead and share it uh, either on ArcGIS Online or maybe even copy it uh, over using a cable to your mobile phone. So once you do this, uh, the navigator for ArcGIS, you're able to, within the, the workforce for ArcGIS, in case you need to navigate to a particular assignment, you just tap navigate to assignment. This launches Navigator for ArcGIS, opens up a particular location and draws the route, the optimized route to the lo location of where you need to go. And then you can be able to use the step-by-step -step directions to get to that particular assignment. Once you get there and you're done, you simply click done and you're able to go back to Workforce for ArcGIS and you're able to come uh, continue working on your assignments. So when it comes to collecting data, you can simply also uh, integrate Collector for ArcGIS within your workforce for ArcGIS. Again, uh, Collector for ArcGIS is an application that allows us to collect data. And uh, there are different things you can collect. For example, you can collect asset inventory. You can do some ground truth truthing. You can uh, you know do some map change request from the application, you can inspect your assets you know, and structures in the field. You can maintain and replace infrastructure based on how you, know, you view them and how they're able to, uh, to, to, how you're able to really inspect them and uh, uh, make uh, a plan of how they can be replaced if they need to be replaced when, once the maintenance has been done. You can mark violations, assess damages of your assets and be able to even add control points and so much more you can be, be able to do with Collector for ArcGIS. So uh, within Collector for ArcGIS, you're able to deploy uh, the solutions very, very easily. So that, for example, you can work uh, with your feature services, which are editable. You can work with location tracking layer like I showed you. You can be able to activate that. You can be able to change the kind of base maps you want to work with. Uh, 
change different uh, settings of your application and even work in offline mode uh, once you go to the advanced settings so collector fork js is a really powerful tool uh, that allows you to extend the reach of your js uh, to the field you can share your maps to field workers using groups in case you don't really want to go through the work uh, workforce for ArcGIS routes. You can be able to just simply share these maps to your groups and they can be able to uh, consume them from, from there. So once, it, once you have the, your future layers published and they are ready, you can simply start editing them to create a map that uh, is usable on collector once you log into collector you'll be able to see it so the the feature layer supported are you know uh hosted for just online and uh ArcGIS server on premise uh the supported operations for these you can be able to edit them and sync the content that you are actually creating from the field so that they're able to be viewed immediately once they are synced to the office you can be able to view pop-ups and fields you can define from the form uh, experience in collector basically what do you want to see as a pop-up you can take advantage of your database capabilities and add your domains and subtypes view related uh, related tables uh, work on future templates finally have field validation and be able to have your edit tracking enabled so you can be able to tell exactly who is working on what future And all this we're saying, you don't really need to start from scratch. We have so many templates available for you to just begin to work on. So you just need to be able to uh, enable, the, go and view the templates available uh, on ArcGIS solutions. And you can be able to implement these and work, 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 work on them. Maybe change a few things here and there and consume them as they are. We have over 60 collector based solution templates for you. For example, bridge inventory, field interviews, damage assessments, check-ins, etc. Another most really good capability of Collector for ArcGIS is enabling you to take your maps offline. So you can take your maps offline. You can be able to view and interact with the map just as you would uh, when it is online. You can measure distances and areas. You can view pop-ups and media. You can search for features. You can collect and update uh, features and as well as synchronize changes between the field and the office once you get to an area with connectivity. So you can collect data when you're offline, go back to a place with Wi-Fi or connectivity and be able to stream that information back to the office and you're also able to download any new information back to your device. So feature services that support editing operations, you're able to create, you're able to update or delete features you must have sync enabled for you to be able to have those particular options you can also work on your tiled map services either on premise or hosted and be able to work on different sg based map services that are available for you to, to uh, take them offline with you so this is a simple user defined offline maps uh, data workflow so basically you author the map that you want you publish it to your ArcGIS online or, or, or portal. Then once you publish it, you prepare the map for download onto your device. Once you, once you download the map for offline uh, capability, you're able to now go ahead and use it. Whether you want to do queries, view the maps, pan, and even edit the map. Once you work on the map by making any, any new additions to the data or deletions based on what you have enabled, you're able now to synchronize this back uh, to your portal or ArcGIS online. And once you synchronize this back, whatever new information is available, you're also able to download it back to your device. Very simply. So just like uh, Workforce for ArcGIS, you can be able to integrate Navigator for ArcGIS within the Collector for ArcGIS. So when you're working within Collector and you reach to a, to a particular area or you're told to go to a particular a point on the map that you have for an asset and you really don't know where it is you can be able to launch navigator and be able to uh, use uh, navigator to navigate you to that particular location and once you're done you go back to your collector and you finish the work that you're actually doing you can collect different assignments uh, you can also use it with workforce for ArcGIS, like it, like the workflow we are trying to 
uh, adapt here you can be able to integrate collector using workforce for workjs collect an assignment complete the assignment go back to your workforce for workjs and be able to update whatever assignments that are, has been assigned to you so let us look at a demo for collector for workjs and navigator for workjs all right so here i'm gonna go I'll, i've launched my workforce for arcgis on my android device i will refresh my projects so we can be able to update and get the latest project that we just created uh, on the workforce web application so i'm just gonna go ahead and refresh it i should be able to see my new project that i created just gonna refresh that make sure that your internet is running scroll down yeah there we go that's the one we open it to launch the project so remember this is on my android device Give it a few seconds. It's opening my project now. There you go. So it has opened with the assignment that we created. If you can remember, we created four assignments. And once I open the workforce project on my mobile device, I get to see the assignments immediately. So you can see this has just been updated. So I can click on the first assignment. You can see this is the description we added for these assignments that we, we did add. So there we go. Just gonna give it a few moments so you can see this is 6.4 kilometers away from where I am and there it is on the map I can tap here to easily navigate to this assignment in case I don't know where it is so again like I said very simple click on that and that opens navigator for ArcGIS with my route few seconds there goes the map that I mentioned you can be able to download from Esri or rather my Esri so there it is just loading oh great now it has been able to draw that particular route that I need to follow so if I'm in a vehicle I just need to place this uh, on the dashboard of my car and I'll be able to follow the details if I can click on the details here turn by turn details of exactly how I need to get to that particular assignment there you go all the way and I can close that and if I'm driving if I click go I get a warning just like you would in your navigation the uh, application and then I can just begin my uh, my navigation. So as I drive, I will be able to get turn by turn directions to exactly where I need to get to that assignment. So once I'm done, I can just simply go back to, I can end that and go back to my workforce. So there we go, that's my assignment. I can now collect something from within that particular assignment that I'm, I've been assigned. I just need to go there and click on collect at assignment once I've reached the destination with the help of Navigator for ArcGIS. And this now opens for me collector for ArcGIS. <clears throat> and I can make any changes. I can be able to add new 
violation for example can add it to there I have a drop down so these are all the domains I was mentioning about and subtypes that you can be able to use use current date very easy to use application and in case I need to put some attachment I can be able to do that but uh, I think I'm good with that I can click on submit and I go back to violation to the main map just give it a few seconds What I want to do right now is sync back uh, to my ArcGIS Online the data that I've just collected. So I go back. Uh, that has been sent directly because I did not download it first. Remember when I said about ArcGIS uh, collector that you need collector for ArcGIS, you need to be able to download the map for offline use. And if you don't, once you capture something, <coughs> it goes, excuse me, it goes directly to the ArcGIS online or portal for ArcGIS. However, if I was to use this example and I open this map, I can simply go ahead and add maybe a cosmetic leak report leak detected does it need a shutdown not really can use the current date the status is collected not resolved all right so I add that. Give it a few seconds for it to load the content. And at this point, it's working a lot because uh, the setting for loading the maps at this point is load all the maps. So that has been added I can just go back and then you can see here I'm just gonna go and select I want to see only the the, the maps that I've been able to uh, take offline with me so only the maps that I have on device that I've downloaded and this is one of them this is the, the, the feature that I've just collected I can simply tap that to synchronize it back uh, to the office So you give it time for it to yes so it's done it sent that information back to the office and then i can now go back to <clears throat> my workforce for arcgis i can go back i can acknowledge it And then I can just simply complete that assignment. Finish. So that assignment is finished. That it's it's taken off the list. And if I now go back to my assignment, I can simply just move. And you can see that this assignment here is now completed and it's in green. And uh, like I mentioned, here you can see James is online. If you go to the workers, you will see that James now has three tasks. One is completed and he's online and active on the status. And he was last seen two minutes ago. He's actually working now. Yeah, he's working. And the rest are offline. So that is workforce for ArcGIS. 
let's go back to our presentation and now we can continue off with survey one two three for arcgis so you've looked at workforce for arcgis and how it integrates with these wonderful applications uh, that allows us to optimize how we work in the field so one of those applications again that we can be able to use uh, to collect data is survey one two three again you can download this application in your google play your app store or your windows store so survey one two three allows us to use you know forms and uh, a form is basically a printed or typed document with blank spaces uh, for insertion of required information so universally uh, we can use survey one two three in utilities whether it's water electric telecom or gas and even other industries you will be able to use survey one two three for that so the kind of field data forms we can capture you know are like inspections assessment forms code enforcement asset inventory and even interviews so you basically convert this into a elect uh, electronic form and you're able to use it to do some data collection and the conversion is very easy to use so you can see here we have the form printed and the form the same form now on the device using survey one two three four arcgis so instead of using paper we want to be able to use what you, what you call a smartphone so what is a smartphone so a smartphone is basically a, an electronic form that now we've converted from a printout and it has different things in itself to make it a smartphone one of them is the type of questions that we can have we can be able to input text integers dates time signatures photos skills we can have uh, multiple choices kind of questions single choices barcode and sketches as well so you can be able to sketch on the on the device another form of smart kind of setup we can do on our smartphone is form logic and validation you can skip questions you can have cascading selects and default expressions on your forms you can have pre-computed responses based on questions that have been asked earlier you can have mandatory questions that you cannot skip you can also have some favorite answers based on uh, how the user is inputting this information so for the look and feel you can group your data you can have multiple pages you can have notes and you can even attach media and also very important you can have multiple language support you can change your themes and even have hints so that it makes it a very good user experience for people who have maybe using the form for the first time again this is all in optimizing our field operations so the field app we can say that is form centric data capture that allows you to capture data mostly in form format it works online and offline that means you don't really need to be online at all times to be able to collect data it is available on smartphones and tablet again like i mentioned you can get it from itunes google play or the windows store and even most importantly if you have a laptop that runs on windows 7 8 or 10 or, or your os and linux you can be able to download survey 1 to 3 and use it within these environments so once you log into survey 1 to 3 dot you're able to create and manage your service you can author you can share and you can even delete surveys that you create you can also view survey results as an overview you can view raw results summarize results and you can even download results that have already been collected so how do you create your service you can either you can either use the web or connect so when you use the web it's the fastest way of creating your service requires minimum training and but it has limited smartphone features for you to add to your service if you want some advanced level you can use survey one to three connect which is a downloadable app uh, that you install and use your xls or your spreadsheet to be able to create your uh, forms however we do suggest that you start with the web before uh, transitioning to survey one to three connect in creating your service so survey one to three connect for arcgis 
allows you to create your smart forms using XLS forms. So it works in combination with a spreadsheet editor that you actually also get to edit. So you ask, uh, you add your questions to the spreadsheet and then you preview the forms in your survey 1 to 3 connect. And then once you're done and you've worked on the survey the, the exactly the way you want it, you can then go ahead and publish it for use within your survey 1 to 3 for ArcGIS application on your smartphone or your laptop. So let us look at, at a demo on survey 1 to 3. So here we have a number of surveys. We've loaded up the violation survey on wastewater report. You can select the type of violation you want to be able to collect. You can add in your pictures and your media, even edit them basically from the interface and add in some information that identifies the pictures and all the, all the media. You can add in your GPS data for your location from the interface very simply by just tapping on it and you can see it does some averaging for you so that it gets to add on the best position from the averaged points then you can have a drop down these are the different types of question you can have you can even be able to put or key in uh, the sketch that of a signature you can simply but be able to sketch that as a signature and add it to your form very simply and once you're done you can either send it later or send it immediately so that is survey one to three in very simple terms so we've looked at all these great applications access for desktop in planning the kind of work we want to be able to extend to the field workforce for gis to be able to coordinate between uh, the field and the office, navigator for ArcGIS and collector for ArcGIS, how they're able to integrate with workforce for ArcGIS to be able to, you know, take us to where the assets are, take us to where the incidents are. And then when we get there, how do we go ahead and collect data or even improve what has been collected before or maybe make changes to the attributes of the assets that have been collected. And then we're able to see how we can be able to incorporate smart forms within our uh, workflows using survey one two three so now we want to see how are we able to monitor the projects that we're working on in real time how we can have key performance indicators on our projects and this we introduce ArcGIS dashboards that allows us to have dashboards that are connected to our data and gives us a way of monitoring exactly what's happening to our projects that we are working on from the field so operation dashboard for ArcGIS uh, or ArcGIS dashboards gives you a great overview of your day-to-day -day operations of your projects. It allows us to manage planned and unplanned events. One of the most important aspects of ArcGIS dashboards is allowing us to visualize key performance indicators and be able to tell exactly what's happening to our assets, what's happening to our work. It comes with ready-to-use widgets that anyone can configure very easily. It, it has maps and legends. You can add your bar charts, your pie charts, your histograms. You can have indicators and gauges, a list of the features that are being worked on, and even details of these particular features. You can have various map tools and feature actions that allows us to interact with the map. For example, you can set layer visibility. You can perform actions on features like, for example, you can follow a moving track. And one of the most important things is that you can extend this using ArcGIS API for JavaScript to be able to build solutions based on exactly how you want them to look like. So the workflow for creating ArcGIS dashboards is very, very easily. You author the content that you want. Uh, basically, after you publish it, you can create and share the views within uh, these operations. And then the operation centers are able to connect to these views and view them on exactly what's happening. And they are connected with your you know, uh, with your ArcGIS online. So if there are field workers connected to your uh, services and able to send data, download data, and, you know, uh, work on projects that they are, they, they are, they've been assigned to, you as the operations officer, you're able to see all this happening from the ground, you're able to track your users, your field workers, and tell exactly where you are. So you can do a lot of 
uh, work with ArcGIS dashboards. But the most important thing is to be able to visualize our key performance indicators within one particular view. So the support platforms, uh, you can use it with ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. You can run it on, 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 your, on your Windows. Uh, you can be able to use it to author and view uh, the different uh, solutions that have been placed. So you can create different operation dashboards uh, for your maps, different maps. You can even add from different sources, different layers. You can bring them together, mash them together to create very good dashboards. You can have multiple display and single display view. Uh, however, you know, you have to be able to log into uh, uh, create content. You can also have one of the latest uh, uh, access dashboards run on your browser so that it's easier for you to configure, easier for you to access it from anywhere, whether you're using it on a tablet, whether you use it on a browser, on your, on, on your laptop, you can be able to open it. No need to configure, no need to deploy anything, no need for any installation. You're able to just open it and start working on your ArcGIS dashboards from there. You can create them, you can view them anonymously, you can be able to work on them very fast because they are working from a browser. So now you can see most of all these apps that I'm talking about can be worked on from a browser and can be viewed from a browser as well. So these are some good examples of some customer ArcGIS dashboards that are live and they give you a good example of how you can be able to create and and arrange your widgets based on how you want them to look like so working with real-time data on operate on ArcGIS dashboards so it's very simple you can have many sources of real-time data that include your vessels your vehicles so in case you're having a tracking layer of anything that is moving whether it's your vehicles your vessels basically your assets including your mobile workers you can bring in that tracking layer into operations uh dashboards or access dashboards and be able to view them and consume them from there scada data that is out there can be able to stream that information to your access dashboards and you're able to view them again weather data people social media all these can be integrated and mashed together and can be viewed from one source uh, on ArcGIS dashboards. You can take advantage of geo event to be able to uh, process this incoming census data to be able to bring them to a future layer, for example, and uh, allow that to be consumed on ArcGIS dashboards. The challenges we have is how do you connect your uh, to, to your apps? How can you process, analyze uh, the content and data? How do you make it available to others? Those are some of the challenges that you can be able to have. But remember, because now you're working with the web, it, be it becomes very easy for you to be able to work uh, with all this content, share it, consume it, and be able to uh, bring it on ArcGIS dashboard. So composition of an Arc ArcGIS dashboard is quite simple. You have your data sources where you be able to select what you want to add on your dashboard, your layers, basically. How many do you want to be able to access on your dashboard? Then you have your map tools for working with, on your on your maps. You have your future actions. For example, once you select uh, a list or an asset, do you want to be able to follow it if it's a moving target? If it's a, a stationary target, you can be able to pan to that uh, target. You can zoom to it. You can show its pop up. You can highlight it or even select it. And then you have a wide range of widgets uh, that, that can be availed on your dashboard to light uh, to make the whole thing come alive with information that is real time and changing as you go so of course the new experience that i'm talking about is on the web you can offer now your ArcGIS dashboards on the browser without having to use any application uh, you can be able to use your smart mapping capabilities labeling you can you can have improved charts uh, available whether it's your pie charts your histograms all those are available on the system you can run side by side with existing dashboards so you can have as many dashboards as you want on the on the browser so let us look at one good example so 
So we go to the browser. And then there we go. So here you can see these are the widgets that I was talking about. You can simply click on the reported issues and incidences and that pans to where exactly that incident is. You can have your summary for example here this list for me all the leaks that have been reported and you can see they are 15 in number here you can see a chart that shows me uh, the severity of the issues that have been reported and most of them have been major in number you can see that uh, the, the major issues reported here are six of them for critical it's three of them cosmetic is one of them for minor it's three and for moderate it's basically two and here you can have a detailed view of the issues that have been reported and you can browse through by just clicking on on that so you can add different widgets based, based on what you really want from it and uh, there are a number of widgets that you can add and this dashboard is very lively it's live and you can be able to use it to tell exactly what's happening on the ground and what's happening to your data even as you go so that's how you're able to monitor what's happening with your data, what's happening with your assignments and your uh, and your work uh, that you have published, whether it's active or not, whether it's real time or not, whether there are mobile workers working on it or not, whether they're connected to different sensors or not, you're able to view them and be able to work on them and arrange how you want to be able to view this. So that is a summary of what we were able to do. See how we're able to plan our work, coordinate, navigate, capture, and even monitor the different projects that we have working online from our services that we've published. So thank you very much for your attendance and welcome.